Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Workers Day goes as far back even as ancient uh, Egypt, where the ancient Egyptians uh, mentioned uh, how they uh, really took care of their workers and appreciated all the work uh, done by them. We have uh, different scripts, Egyptian ancient scripts, saying work hard all the time, do more than what is required, do not waste opportunities, and much more appreciating the efficiency of Egyptian uh, workers. We're delighted to be joined over the telephone by our guest for this morning, Dr. Yahya Abdel Eder, the former Minister of Tourism Councillor. Dr. Yahya, a very good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, Doctor, on today's edition uh, of The Breakfast Show. Tell me a bit about how uh, ancient Egyptians sanctified work. Well, really, uh, as we all know, like, uh, Egypt has been ecologically connected with the River Nile yes. throughout times of flooding or drought. And we remember the legend of Prophet Joseph when the king, you know, like dreamt of uh, seven fat cows and seven lean cows. Yes. And that led them to, uh, you know, like toil diligently for seven years to grow corn and then store it in the granaries. So this is shows, you know, like the hard labors of workers by that time. Mm -hmm. And Egypt uh, been recognized as food basket of the region. And it was under constant threat of invasion. Uh, from Sinai East and to Nubia West, to Nubia South and Libya West, and at some point from the Mediterranean. That led Egypt, you know, like to form a strong army of infantry, of archery, of cavalry, and naval forces as well, you know? So that shows, you know, like the type, you know, like of precision of making, you know, like a professional army and professional workers and farmers and growers so uh, work has been like sacred, you know, like throughout uh, ancient and Pharaonic times. And we see, you know, like the fruit of it, you know, like uh, manifestations and the process, for example, of mummification and the temples and the tombs and the museums as well. Absolutely. Dr. Yahya, could you tell us a bit about some of the most, you know, prominent examples of ancient Egyptian scripts uh, speaking about the value of work as well as workers uh, of ancient Egypt? Well, the, the values, you know, like it's not only words and poetry and lyrics, but it is manifested, you know, like in the uh, heritage, you know, like both, you know, like uh, 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 moral, uh, uh, you know, like uh, heritage and the physical one as well. Mm -hmm. For example, so I was the belief, you know, like in monotheism, they perfected the art of mummification. And this, you know, like self sophisticated up to now, that led them to become the leading physicians, chemists, and biologists of the world, uh, for example. Indeed. Uh, and their belief of the Supreme God, you know, like they had to go and build, you know, like temples and tombs. And uh, for, at one point, El Karnak and ancient Thebes Luxor. There were 100,000 priests, you know, like running that religious, you know, like monolithic, you know, like complex by the time. Mm -hmm. So all the manifestation that we have currently shows, you know, like how they were dedicated. And it was a religious task for them to perfect uh, the work that we have seen, you know, like the heritage uh, and, you know, like, uh, you know, like uh, uh, commitments and the products that we enjoy today. Absolutely. Dr. Yahya, now a very important worker in ancient Egyptian uh, times was the scribe, or the person responsible for the inscriptions that we've seen on many, many walls and temples and papyrus, etc. Could you tell me a bit about uh, their importance and their status in ancient Egypt? Well, uh, of course, we, we have, you know, like the manifestation all over Egypt, not all over Egypt uh, only, but, you know, like uh, museums worldwide, you know, like the... Uh, include and they contain, you know, like Egyptian collections. Some of them may have like about 20 or 30 artifacts. Mm -hmm. belongs from the, you know, like uh, ancient and, and, and all the dynasties after the 30s, you know, like dynasty of, of Egyptian rule and monarchy. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the pyramids, you know, like, and the, the Saqqara necropolis, where they had to make, you know, like room for the uh, left, you know, like and mummification of the sacred bull, the 60 of these and some of them were like from 20 to 40 tons of, you know, like uh, diorite and the most hardest, you know, like material by the time. Mm -hmm. So this is really some of the secrets of Egyptian labor and perfectionism, you know, like, and skills are not, you know, like um, delivered and recognized up to now. 
uh, when they have the, the, the Great Pyramid of Giza, they had a division of labor. Because throughout the past season, the workers will go like 20, 25,000 of them for the construction of the pyramid. And there was a great wall, you know, like this is a great discovery because, you know, like researchers and Egyptologists, they made discoveries of this great wall. So to have an access to go and work in the pyramid, there was rotation, there was worker groups, and they had accommodation for them. They had quarters for food, and even they have emergency medical services as well. So this is so sophisticated if we are talking about 45 centuries ago. Indeed, it is uh, uh, absolutely amazing. Dr. Yahya, let me ask you, did uh, ancient Egyptians have, you know, in, within their workforce uh, different cadres or different positions like team leader or pos uh, manager, for example? Is there any proof that they had some sort of hierarchical system uh, when it came to their workers? Definitely, yeah, because, you know, like they have like, like chief, you know, like uh, chief teams, you know, like of, of doing the project that they have and, and still, you know, like, uh, currently for the, for the present day, we have seen the fruit of their work, you know, like uh, we have, you know, like models of their working in farming and growing grapes, uh, taking care of the herds mm -hmm. and cattle, agriculture, uh, the, the uh, formation of the army, women working in the field and men. So everything really has been, you know, like uh, inscribed, you know, like and carved on the, on the walls of the temples and the tombs and some have written and uh, we, we have small modules, you know, like of this, shown, for example, in the tomb to thank Kamon, and they perfected the art of mummification. That's why they mummified, you know, like uh, the bodies, and then they have agriculture products like pomegranate and food and fish and cheese, and some of the animals they used, uh, uh, you know, like uh, the sacred, even like baboons and dogs and everything. Mm -hmm. So really, uh, and these things have been kept for 3,000 years. Absolutely. So this is a great, you know, like uh, achievement. And then remember, at the day of judgment, mm. everybody is going <laughs> weighing, you know, like his, you know, like deed and the other life, you know, to go to paradise. And so that, that's why, you know, like during his lifetime, he was so careful to do everything in a correct and the best way. Absolutely. We have lots of depictions on uh, ancient Egyptian walls and temples of workers and their importance and uh, ancient Egypt was one of the first civilizations to have such an organized workforce uh, like you said. How do you see the organization and the specific uh, you know variety of different workforces to cater for the needs of ancient Egyptians at the time? Uh, it was really so sophisticated so mm. for example for you know like in September when the, the floods you know like has been receding and in October, when the fall, you know, start, you know, like sowing, you know, like the corn and the plants, you know, like to grow elements for uh, stables and food. So, for example, they have like one group, as we see, you know, like on the temples and the tombs, and then like, uh, you know, like throwing, you know, like the seeds. And then they have another group to make sure that the seeds, you know, like are implanted in the fertile land of Egypt. So they have pigs. You know, like, so that to walk in the fields, you know, like to make sure that every seed has been implanted deep. Mm -hmm. And that was another group. And then they have the irrigation, you know, like system year round. And then it's time for harvest. And then, like, thrashing, you know, like the, the corn. Uh, and then they store it, you know, like in granaries. And up to now, it's still assembled of all the types of food they produced. And they kept, you know, like, and remember the, the, the great, you know, like, legend or Prophet Joseph and how he saved Egypt. Mm. And Egypt was like food basket of the whole region. We remember all tribes coming from all corners, you know, like north and south and west, to come to get their food supplies, you know, like uh, to survive through droughts and through hard times and famine that has been striking the region by the time. Absolutely. Finally, uh, Dr. Yahya, let me ask you, what are uh, some of the periods of ancient Egypt during which the Egyptian workers uh, you know, started obtaining their rights and proof of this? Well, they were, uh, yeah, we remember, you know, like uh, uh, the story, you know, like that was inscribed in the Middle Kingdom of the Allah uh, al or the eloquent farmer, <laughs> who had, you know, like his own property taken by some powerful men, and then the Pharaoh and the ruler and the prince heard about it, and he bring him to court, mm. and he made it tell the stories many times, and this has been recorded. 
And yes. all, you know, like his rights and his dues were given back to him. And the transgressors, they've been punished. And we keep this in the record, you know, like of our ancient relics. You know. mm -hmm. So that shows there was a, a, a perfect system where everybody took his rights, his pay. There was no money by the time they were trading services, but it was a perfect way to conduct life in ancient Egypt. Absolutely. On that note, I'd like to thank you very, very much, Dr. Yahya Abdel Edor, our uh, former Minister of Tourism, a uh, counselor, and our guest uh, for this morning. Thank you so much, Doctor, for your time, for joining us on today's edition of The Breakfast Show. And I'm afraid that's all the time we have for this morning. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us. You're in the company of myself, Andrew Meher. Have a very good morning.